Hello, this is Yusra Abu Rabia from the Arab Master Program. It is usual to assert that human rights are a European invention, a product of the Enlightenment, a product of the liberal political breeding ground of Western cultures. As a result, Arab cultures are said to have discovered and adopted practices and representations of human rights only very late in their institutions, which is one of the reason, one of the first question that arise in Western spheres of discussion is whether it is relevant to talk about human rights in the region. Yet it was in the heart of the geographical cradle Mesopotamia in the Middle East that the first moral and legal principle that would form the basis of modern human rights emerged. The Code of Hammurabi established around 1750 before Christianism in the Babylonian era, now Iraq, already introduced a whole series of fundamental rights just, just, such as property, protection of individuals, etc. The Cylinder of Sirius, a code dating from 539 before Christianism, was also discovered in the ruins of Babylon. The transition to the Islamic era, far from rejecting the principle of fundamental human rights, will, on the contrary, reinforce the sanctity of human life and free will. Contrary to the medieval Christian tradition, which contrasts temporal and celestial laws, the Muslim tradition recognized only one legal system, which is essentially Quranic and places human beings at the center of its concerns. The need to confirm fundamental rights of human beings is also found at a strictly political level. This is notably the case with the Shura principle, the consultations of the people that allow for the discussion of a, sp a specific question to political life. These shura are recognized as necessary in the Quran, not, not only because they consult believers, but also because they will not deny their will. While, of course, these assemblies do not operate according to the democratic modern principles, they do bear witness to the place and their rights within the ancient Arab Islamic tradition. However, the appropriation of modern human rights in the Arab world developed rather late in the 20th century because most Arab territories were not, until that period, independent nation. When the Arab League was found, founded in 1945, the issue of human rights was not on its agenda. Its aim was above all to combat the influence of the European colonial powers by forming a federated body of Arab nation. This posture, which is more geopolitical, international than national and societal, became more pronounced with the Cold War so that the question of human rights remained anecdotal for a long time. In fact, it was not until the creation of the Permanent Arab Commission for Human Rights in 1968 that things changed. As a result of the work of this commission, the first draft of an Arab Charter for Human Rights was produced in 1971. In 1994, the Arab League adopted the final version of this chapter, but it does not have a decisive influence, since among the Arab states, only Iraq recognized it. In 2004, the charter was revised again with the help of the UN. In 2008, it entered into force after ratification by 10 Arab states, among which Jordan, Libya, Yemen, and so on. The following year, an Arab Commission for Human Rights was created, but the Charter did not provide for the establishment of human rights courts of tribunal. Although the Charter incorporates many fundamental principles, such as equality between men and women, the rights of the disabled, children's rights, etc., it ignores a whole other series of fundamental rights. In 1981, the Islamic Council of Europe, a private institution based in London, published the Universal Islamic Declaration of Human Rights. A year later, the organization of the Islamic Conference was inspired by it in its Declaration of Human Rights in Islam adopted in Cairo in, in the 1990, which was a response to the Universal Declaration. This one is non-binding, poorly stated, and above all, it is not recognized by the UN as a regional instrument, as it is the case with the Arab Charter. However, it is interesting to read and know it because it is politically set up as a counter project to the Universal Declara Declaration and also reflects part of the law on the subject. So what about the definition of human rights by the state? It is the heart of the human rights issue in the Arab world. While the ancient Islamic tradition does not neglect the role of human rights in their social life, 
their translation to contemporary application is more complex. Several Arab states are regularly associated with problems of human rights violations and the repression of individual freedoms. This difficulty is the application of modern human rights is obviously due to many factors. The first, regularly invoked, is anthropological and religious. In most Muslim cultural models, the role of the community predominates over that of the individual, particularly within family structure. The Quran also states that men are responsible for and have authority over women in certain areas. The religious law applied to many areas, such as family, for example, is a constant reminder that individual rights take second place to rights towards God and towards the community of believers. The other important factor is political. The current Arab states, most of which are the offspring of a recent institution, have, built, have been built sorry, above all in opposition to individual rights and freedom in a logic of virilist assertions of power. On this subject, the culture of Arab virility and masculinity is very well described in Nadia Tazi's book, Le Genre Intraitable. At, in, in today, human rights in the Arab region are the result of a dynamic that combines domestic pressure, associations of individual and international pressure, action by NGOs and international organizations, first and foremost, the UN. Under this combined pressure, many states have granted individual rights and freedoms in an effort to constantly reinterpret religious texts to remain consistent with their source of legitimacy. Some states are more successful than others. It is these disparities that show that no culturalist or deterministic reduction would make it possible to assert, as it's rarely heard, that Arab countries are hermetic or resistant to modern human rights. The Arab world has produced its own legal tradition and the mimetic will imposed directly or indirectly by the international community has also led to perverse effects such as superficial respect, hypocrisy, outright rejection or favor of radical religious ideology. One of the answers to this equation probably may lie in the fact that change must come from within in order for the rights claim to be more legitimate and recognized as a local culture or as a local production. But how? That would be the subject of the next discussion.